I'm pleased to deliver an update on our cloud services product, which is nearly ready for a public unveiling. The product consists of a distributed data center and a decentralized client known as a relayer for enterprise customers to access the network. Every user on our network will communicate through a relayer instance. Every company using the XNS product will have a dedicated relayer configuration. The relayer is a combination of distributed client, database, and cache, with the ability for multiple users to share access to objects and files based on privilege level. Previous demos showcased manually provisioned relayers, performing basic backup functionality. Today we're excited to show an end-to-end -end process, complete with the ability to set up root account, pay for use, and provision a relayer. We've implemented single sign-on for access to user consoles, which are consistent for EXA Net Service users and storage providers as we roll out an identity and access management strategy. Menus change depending on which services you have access to. Once logged into the console for XNet services, you identify yourself and provide payment details. Users pay in dollars, creating a storage budget. Next, we begin the process of setting up a server, installing the database, and instantiating the cache. The customer pays for storage and creates a client for decentralized network operations with no use or awareness of cryptocurrency custody or transactions. This is evolution then revolution, as we believe real-world companies are not yet ready for many of the risks in Web 3.0, but will love the benefits that do not force them to change current processes. Once funded, Create Relayer appears. This demo shows a cloud-based version on our server clusters, but customers have a choice of cloud-based, on-premise installs, or purchasing pre-configured devices. The Relayer is provisioning, and we're given two keys and a custom URL for this Relayer instance. Once active, we'll create a master bucket. Buckets and files are foundation and addressable objects on S3-based cloud storage. Once the first bucket is created, we are able to start uploading files directly to the network. Most customers won't use the console for day-to-day -day file operations, but instead choose one of the over 30,000 S3-compatible applications. We'll use backup as an example. VM is a good demo, as it is a widely used tool by our target customer market, and it stresses a good amount of the S3 compatibility list. Here, we're creating a new backup job. We enter the custom URL, followed by private keys as shown earlier. Next, we choose the bucket we created. Now we have enough info to begin the backup job. When completed, we'll have a backup repository and the data structures will show up in our console. The final step is to kick off the job by choosing assets to include in the backup. We choose parameters of the backup job inside VM, such as retention policies and scheduling.
Once we're set, we launch the job and we can see it building the host list below. Let's talk now about some of the backbone technologies in use on the distributed data center. The first being erasure codes. We use this simple algebra to slice data into equal sized chunks that get uploaded to storage providers all around the planet. Extra pieces are added to provide durability. The secret sauce in the distributed data center is those thousands of storage providers, allowing us to custom tailor the equation for optimal cost, performance, and durability ratios. AWS, in contrast, uses simple replication, creating two complete copies and resulting in a 2x expansion in total data uploads and this informs the AWS S3 pricing model. In that model, any two facilities can fail and still have recoverable data. So if we match their any two can fail, we need just 66% of the same data transfer. With those thousands of individual providers, we can tweak this math to arrive at extreme redundancy at just a fraction of the cost. Erasure codes are not without issue though, with extra processing to create the chunks, and more importantly, a method to ensure chunks are filled completely to eliminate wasted space. Chunks are uploaded even if not completely filled, yet the client still pays for the whole chunk and bandwidth to transfer the chunk, leaving the network filled with expensive air. To solve this problem, the relayer holds files in the cache until there is enough to fill a chunk before uploaded. The customer only pays for storage used. Smart contracts on our blockchain are known as Layer 2 state channels. We form contracts with providers off-chain, which aids in performance as only opening, revision, and closing transactions are written to the blockchain. But contracts are accessed sequentially, sort of like tickets at the DMV. And when a contract is locked for revision, no other activity can occur against that contract. Removing this hurdle, storage providers now grant access with a token, allowing clients to do sector reservations and upload data outside of the contract, while a light database on the provider tracks changes for later multiplexing into the contracts. Metadata handling is also an issue preventing network use at scale. The Relayer database is designed to hold this information and make it accessible to anyone in the organization. The two types of metadata for file objects are Merkle tree key pair data and object attributes. Key pair data identifies objects in the erasure coded chunks and on which providers the chunks are sent to. Object attributes are file versions, permission lists, life cycling, immutability, and tags for how data is stored and who can access it. The world is dominated by a single corporation with a small number of environmentally unfriendly data centers with customers locked into client capabilities owned and controlled by that corporation. A decentralized client on a distributed network allows groups to access, collaborate, and share data while maintaining control and ownership. The SC Prime Distributed Data Center and the Relayer tool used in the Exanet Services product combine to create a powerful and disruptive alternative with strong decentralization. Join our Discord community to become a part of our effort and to learn more. Our backup is now being sent to the network and we can monitor the progress inside the console. Fresh data remains in the cache, depending on the relayer configuration and disk size. That covers the relayer introduction. We're on path to a full product release toward the end of 2021, but the major pieces of this exciting technology are now in place. It works. If you're interested in giving our network a trial with any S3-compatible app, visit this link and connect up with us.